Have you ever tried to compose lambdas and found yourself stuck? It can be quite a challenge, especially when you want to add branching to your transformations. If that's you, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into how to implement branching when composing lambdas from other lambdas. I totally get it. Trying to create a functor that allows for branching can feel overwhelming. You're not alone in this struggle. Many developers face similar challenges when experimenting with functional programming concepts. Here's the specific situation we're looking at. One user recently asked, how can I implement a branch method in my procedure container to allow conditional execution? They want to extract a value from an immutable state and perform different actions based on that value. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So, what's the core issue here? The user has created a functor that allows for linear transformations, but is struggling to add branching logic. This is a common hurdle when working with functional programming, especially when trying to maintain immutability. And stick around. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to implement that branch method and I promise it will make your Lambda compositions much more powerful. To implement a branching method in the procedure container, the user should first create a new method called branch. This method will take a by function that defines the condition for branching. Next, the user needs to define how to handle the two branches. This involves creating a new class, branch procedure container, that will manage the branching logic. In the branch procedure container, the user should implement methods for mapping and terminating each branch. This will allow the user to specify what happens in each case. Finally, the user should modify the original procedure container to integrate the new branch procedure container. This will allow the user to seamlessly switch between branches based on the condition. Fun fact, did you know that functional programming languages like Haskell were designed to handle complex data transformations with ease? It's fascinating how these concepts can be applied in Java too. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. In this alternative approach, the user introduces a solution using a value container class to manage branching in Lambda compositions. This class holds a value and a termination flag, allowing the procedure to determine if a branch was executed or not. The user rewrites the procedure interface to return a value container instead of a direct value. This change simplifies the handling of terminated branches and integrates seamlessly with the procedure container class, which now includes a branch method. Finally, the user notes that while this solution works, it could be improved by reducing the number of checks for termination. They invite suggestions for better naming conventions and optimizations. Here's the pro tip I promised. Always test your branching logic with different scenarios to ensure it behaves as expected. This will save you a lot of headaches down the line. And there you have it. You now know how to implement a branch method in your procedure container. Remember, experimenting with these concepts can lead to powerful and flexible code. If you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button for more tips and keep coding.